What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. I figured since we spent the last few weeks talking about different rudiments and how we can apply them to the kit and also some soloing transcriptions that it might be cool if we started talking about some grooves as well. So today I want to chat about the songo. Songo is a Cuban rhythm and what makes it stand out from some other Cuban rhythms that you might be familiar with is the fact that it was created specifically for the drum kit. Most other Cuban rhythms you know are arrangements for the drum kit of other instruments. So we take the conga part, the timbale part, the various bells, the shakers, and we try to find some way to orchestrate that on the kit and create the same feeling that those instruments create. Songo, on the other hand, like I said, was created specifically for the drum kit, and it was created by a drummer by the name of Changuito. He played in the group Los Van Van. Now there's a great uh, documentary on YouTube called La Historia del Songo, uh, which features Changuito himself talking to the great piano player Rebecca Molion about the history of Songo. So I'll let you go check that out. I want, don't want to talk too deep about the history of Songo today because you can go straight to the source and hear it in that video, but rather we're going to look at a few modern interpretations of the Songo that were done by the great Jeff Tane Watts. So like I said, I don't want to do too much history of the Songo, but we do need to know what a basic Songo sounds like so that the new interpretation will, will make sense to you. So let's take a look at that now. I'm going to put the notation up on the screen and there's just a few things that I'd like you to be aware of. First off, I'm going to actually start playing just on the rims and this is just more of a kind of historical thing because the first drummer in Los Van Van, Chanquito was not the original drummer, the first drummer in Los Van Van did not have any cymbals. So when Changuito took over the role, he came to a drum kit that had no cymbals on it. He played a lot of stuff on the rims, as you might do with timbales. Um, and he mentions in the video that the drum kit had a piece of wood attached to it. I, I think he said it was bamboo. And he played a lot of the rhythms on there. So we're going to mimic that by playing on the, the rims of the floor tom and the snare drum. Also, you'll notice uh, that I play the bombo note. Now, the bombo note is the and of two. In a lot of other Cuban rhythms, we play the bombo note only on the three side of the clave, whether it be three, two, or two, three, the bombo note goes on the end of two in the three side of the clave. With songo, we play the bombo note in every bar. So it's on the sort of middle note of the three side and it falls in between the two notes of the two side. Now, stylistically, you can also occasionally put the bass drum on beat one. You'll hear Changuito do that in the video but the bombo note is pretty much there every bar. Uh, and there are some more modern orchestrations as well where you hear the, the bass drum on beat four as well, sort of like the tumbao, which is what the bass player plays. So you would hear it on the end of two as well as on beat four. But for now, I'm just gonna play on the rims, bombo note every time, nothing on beat one, nothing on beat four. Check it out. One, two, three. Now, if you're familiar at all with Cuban music or clave, you'll probably recognize that what I just played was in 2-3 rumba clave, meaning I started on the 2 side of the clave, and on the 3 side of the clave, the third note was syncopated. It was on the end of 4, rather than being right on beat 4 as it would be in son clave. Now, I played it in 2-3 clave because that's the most common way that you'll hear songo. The majority of songos are written in 2-3 rumba clave. However, that's not to say that they can't be written in 3-2, and that's the first difference we're going to look at today with these Jeff Tane Watts orchestrations. I pulled these three different ideas from a tune called Earth Dance by Jerry Gonzalez and the Ford Apache Band, and that tune is written in 3-2 rumba clave. So all three of these examples are going to be in 3-2. The cool thing with clave, though, is everything is pretty much just reversible. So these examples that I show you today will be in 3-2, but if you want to play the same ideas in 2-3, all you have to do is reverse the two bars. So let's look at the first of these orchestrations. On his kit, Tane has a cowbell. It's a pretty big one, it's like a mambo bell. So he's able to get two pretty clear pitches out of it. A low one down by the mouth of the bell and a higher one up by the smaller part of the bell. And I think what he's doing is mimicking what you would see on a set of timbales. 
Typically you would have two timbales and in the middle you would generally have two bells, sometimes more, maybe sometimes only one, but two is pretty common. You'd have a low bell and a higher bell. So I think by sort of splitting his hands on his one bell, he's trying to mimic that sound. So let's look at this first uh, orchestration. I'm gonna put the notation on the screen again. A few things to notice about it that really sort of make this groove tick. The first is the accents in his left hand specifically. He accents that rumba note on the end of four on the three side, and then he accents beat two of the two side. So the first of the two notes on the two side of the clave. And also on the two side, he accents the end of four again. So in both bars, he's accenting the end of four, and he's also accenting beat two of the two side of the clave. So that'll sound like this. Also, he's playing the bombo note every time, but he's going for that tumbao sound that I mentioned earlier. He's playing the end of two and beat four every time. However, he's not playing beat four on his bass drum, he's playing it on the floor tom. So his hand is moving back and forth between the cowbell and the floor tom. So he's playing that right hand, just kind of steady quarter notes on the, uh, on the cowbell, but dropping down to the floor tom for, uh, for beat four. And also check out what he's doing with his hi-hat. He's playing the hi-hat on beat four and beat one of every bar, which I think just kind of opens up the feel a little bit. So it's one, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So let's take that over to the kit now and see what that sounds like all put together. In this next orchestration, we don't really change much at all, but it actually makes quite a big difference to the sound. For the most part, the only thing we're changing is we're moving that left hand off of the cowbell down onto the snare drum. So uh, we're still playing those same, that same accent pattern, but now we're down on the snare drum, we have those ghost notes on the snare drum, but those accents on the and of four are occasionally splashed on the hi-hat or played on the high tom. But for the most part, we're just moving the left hand down to the snare drum. Check it out. With each of those last two orchestrations, bear in mind that you don't have to have a cowbell to play them. You could just as easily take those same rhythms and same accent patterns and orchestrate them around the kit in different ways, which you might want to do even if you do have a cowbell. You could put your right hand up on the ride cymbal, you could play it on the rim, left hand could go on the snare drum or a combination of snare drum and hi-hat and tom. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you can, you can play around with this using those same rhythms. But this third variation from Earth Dance, Tane actually does come off of the cowbell and move up to the ride cymbal and the snare drum. So again, I'm gonna put the notation down on the screen, just a few things to notice about this one. He plays the ride cymbal a lot like the cowbell. He's playing the, uh, the bell on the beats and on the off beats, he's kind of playing more uh, on the body of the cymbal. He's also still going to the tom on beat four, but instead of the floor tom, he's dropping down to one of the higher toms, which is just a little bit of a lighter sound. Now with the accent patterns, it changes a little bit. 
he's now accenting the and of one in the first bar, which kind of at first glance seems an odd place to put it, but he's actually kind of mimicking a pretty common conga part in, in a songo. So he's accenting the and of one, again he's accenting the and of four, and now what he's doing, instead of accenting the first note of the two side of the clave, he's accenting the second note. So he plays a little ghost note leading into the, um, the first note of the two side, and then he accents the second note of the two side, which almost gives it a little bit of a backbeat sort of feel. So that's gonna sound like this. Two, three, four. So you might have heard as well, I was kind of tapping my foot where the, where the bass drum was. He's also, in addition to playing the bombo note still in every bar, he's now playing on beat one of every bar as well. Now that's not exactly traditional, this is kind of more of a modern approach. Like I said earlier, you would typically play the bombo note in every bar and just occasionally drop it in on beat one as a variation. But what Tane is doing here is playing it on every bar, and I guess that just kind of gives it a little bit more, uh, more of a drive, even though it's not necessarily traditional, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and again, those accents on beat four can go up to the hi-hat or onto the toms. So let's take that over the kit and check it out. So there you go, you've now got three new orchestrations for the songo. But bear in mind, it's not really just three orchestrations, because with each of those rhythms that we've played, you can orchestrate them around the kit in lots of different ways, and remember, anything that we play in 3-2, we can play in 2-3 just by flipping around. So you can really take these orchestrations and do a lot with them. It's going to work on a lot of tunes, so I hope you have a bit of fun with that. Drop me a comment down below if you have any questions or requests for future videos, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.